darkness fear. Show your mighty hand, heal our streets and land, set your church on fire with this name. And take a seat. I'll pray for, uh, for Pastor Brian. Father, it's uh, obvious to you and, and probably obvious to, to folks here that our first songs are, are just our prayers that you would be more involved in our individual lives, in our congregation, in our world. And I think part of that means that we have to get out of the way. Lord, um, help us to have the courage to get out of the way uh, and then listen for your direction and, and when you need us to march forward and when you need us to, to take a breath. And right now, Father, that we would take a large breath and hear your word to receive the message from you through Pastor Brian uh, that we challenge ourselves to learn to be present um, and to take something away that changes us fundamentally. And I pray specifically for Pastor Brian as he enters into this teaching, that he um, subjects himself to you um, and teaches accurately according to what you require of him. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> so as I said, you know, we, we're, we work as part of life. And um, it's something we all have to do um, to a certain extent. Yeah, you do it because you 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 gotta pay, you gotta pay bills. You gotta put a house roof over your head. You gotta pay you know get groceries. I mean, work is just it's part of life. And so why are you doing it becomes uh, really important. What I would like to do today is is that the the kind of the goal at the end of it is to help you kind of get your eyes up and and to do it for the right person with your heart focused on God and filled with your with the blessings and that transforms it I, what I'm, so what I'm going to do is uh, I want I want I want to kind of paint you a picture from a like there's like four or five different angles to look at what what is what is the reason for working what is our design as a, as a person, as people, on how does that look like? What, what, are, we, what are we doing here? And the first thing is, 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 is you, you are designed to work. You, you're supposed to work. Work is not an effect of the fall. In fact, it's something that happened because of the fall it, that, that makes it horrible. But you were designed for it. God works. When we look here at, like, like, Woo, wrong one. Do, 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 do. Here we go. There we go. Jesus said in, in John 17 that he glorified the Father by completing his work. Jesus worked. In John 5, he says, I, the Father is working and so am I. Jesus worked in, in, that, in that sense of strenuous mental or physical exertion. He works. But then when we look at our original design in Gen Genesis chapter 2, we were designed to work. And this is before the fall. Work was, was, was there before you, things got all messed up. I know a lot of times we think, oh, work. But that's because we think of work as something not enjoyable, as miserable. But you're designed for it. You were created to work. To put in either physical or mental e hard effort into something. You're supposed to. God works. But here's, here's the thing. It's not just that you were designed for it. It's been messed up. That's, this, this is one of the effects of the fall. When we go to chapter 3 and we look at what is it that, that, the, that, that God says is going to happen because of their sin... 
that they're, they're, it's going to be toil. It's going to be miserable. It's not going to produce what they want it to produce. It's going to be horrible. Yes. But this is not what we're supposed to be. In fact, as I want to kind of help us see, is it's meant to be a type of worship. Now, where am I getting that? There's a couple of things I just kind of want to get, and this is where I need to try and paint a picture from you. One of which is when you look at Genesis chapter 2, it is very obvious for those who, who take the time and look at it, that when, when you look at Genesis, the description of the garden, it's got temple imagery, gems, rivers, lushness, all of these kinds of things, gold, precious stones, precious metals. When you go further into, into like Exodus and then in Solomon's temple, these are the same kinds of things that are used to decorate the sanctuaries. It's, a t it, it, it's like they're copying the Garden of Eden. And then, of course, the, 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 the Near Eastern image idea of where do gods live? They live in gardens. It's meant to be seen as this primordial, this original temple that humanity is supposed to live in, is the Garden of Eden, the Garden in Eden. <coughs> Eden is, a, is, is like an, an area, and then inside of Eden is this spot, and this spot is the garden, and that is supposed to be where God lives. And who lives in temples besides a God? Priests do. We were supposed to be priests. And then you look at these two words, work it and care for it. And I understand for, for many of us, we think, oh, we're supposed to be gardeners. But I, I want to press up against that a little bit here for a couple of reasons. One, it doesn't fit grammatically. It, the word it there, work it, take care of it, does not match grammatically with garden. So there's, there's already like, well, who's it referring to? But then you look at how those two words are used by Moses, and you get things like in, in, in Numbers. Doo -doo -doo -doo. No. You get things like in Numbers, chapter, chapter 3, where the same two words are used to describe what the priests are supposed to do. Numbers 3 says, Bring the tribe of Levi near, and set them before Aaron the priest, that they may and here's one of the two words, minister to him. They shall keep, here's another one, keep guard over him and over the whole congregation before the tent of meeting as they minister at the tabernacle. And so when you're seeing this, these two words are used for what a priest does, not a gardener, a priest. They're supposed to do what they do in the temple. And they're supposed to take care of something. They're supposed to righteously respond to Aaron. They're supposed to do the right thing. And this is what the, this this idea of of what we were supposed to do is not just simply to prune trees but ultimately to serve and to do so righteously fits theology the, theologically with what the rest of the scripture says that what our purpose is. And so you go to places like like Doo, 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 doo. Revelation 5, and you read this, that Jesus, by his blood, has made the people, made people to be a kingdom of priests to serve God and reign on the earth. That is a restoring of the original intent of Genesis 1 and 2. That we're supposed to be priests. We're supposed to be priests. We're supposed to serve God. It makes it when we go back to and we look at things like what Jesus is doing here, where he's glorifying God on the earth, that, that he's doing what we are supposed, he's being a perfect human being. He's working to bring glory to God. That is worshiping. He's supposed to obey. He's serving. He is the servant. Now, of course, his specific task is different than ours, but his pattern is our pattern. This is why you're supposed to be like Jesus, because Jesus perfectly lived what a human being is supposed to be. Serve. The, sa the word for work is the exact same word for worship. Work, serve, 
Worship in Hebrew is the same word. That should tell you something about what is it that work is supposed to be. What work is supposed to be. What worship is supposed to be. It's not just singing songs. You serve. You give. You keep. You obey. You you do so with righteousness. Interestingly, I mean, he says you are to keep the garden, and he's given them a command. You keep the command. It fits with the larger image of what we're supposed to be doing as a human being. And so you have things like 1 Corinthians 10, 10, 31, which says, whatever you do, do it to the glory of God, right? Doesn't matter what you do. You're all supposed to do it for the glory of God. Why? Because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to image God, right? Genesis chapter 1. Where am I here? There we go. In the image of God, he created them to rule. Do you, see, you hear the parallels between this and in Revelation 5? What does it mean to image God? It's not complicated. It means you make people look at you and they go, oh, that's what God's like. Just like a picture. What do they look like? Well, here's a picture of them. Oh, well, that's what they look like. This is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to reveal what God looks like. What does it mean to reveal God? It is to glorify God. If you show God this is what God's like, that glorifies him. It's all the same idea. So humanity was designed to serve, that is to worship, that is to glorify God. That's your job. That's your purpose. That's your work. And it can be mundane, menial. It doesn't have to be standing up here or playing music. It's how you do everything. It's everything you do. Does it, dis- does it reveal this is what God is like? One of my favorite little books, um, one of these days maybe I'll do a class on it. Um, it's a little book called... Um, I'm living in the presence of God by Brother Lawrence. Um, it is, it, it's just this, this monk, which is crazy, you know, that, we, that, I, that I feel like my life, uh, my, how to have a personal relationship with God is built on this, this, uh, this, this, this Catholic monk of, of like, I think it's 1600s. But one of the things he lovely does is he says, I try to do everything in the presence of God to give him jo- enjoyment. I'm living for Jesus as I wash dishes, he says. I'm washing dishes, and I'm just going to do it with Jesus, for Jesus. It's like, now that's what you do. You find it, there's no menial task. That's part of what's going on in the whole washing of feet that Jesus does in John. It's, there's, no, there's, there's nothing too low that you can't do that as an act of service, as a way of glorifying God, as revealing this is what God is like. This is your job. But we get it all mixed up. We get it all ruined by the fall. Because we start thinking about it as just simply, I have to work for my necessities. And work becomes self-focused. And so therefore kind of unenjoyable. But this is what's going on in in Ephesians, this is why I'm bringing this up, because if we come back here to, to Ephesians chapter 6 and 4, right, when we talk about it, you must not steal any longer, that's wrong kind of working. Instead, you're supposed to work, that is put in physical effort or mental effort, doing it how? Doing good with your own effort, Right? To what to what end that you can give? That's like Jesus. Jesus worked to give. So are we. And as I put it into context, right? What we come in here to context, right? We're supposed to be, whoop, come on. Uh, I'll just read it. I'll just read it. If you come in here, uh, if you Chapter 4, you know, that verse 24. So it says, 
that we're, we're created to put on the likeness of God, true righteousness and holiness, because that's what you're supposed, that, that's what you were created to be. And of course that means that you don't steal. Of course that means, as it says, says chapter 1, verse 1, we need to imitate God. We need to walk in love as Christ loved and gave himself up for us. This is work. This is what work is supposed to be. So that whatever you do, you do for the glory of God. And so we come back to this, you know, you know, this, this issue of why are we working? And it's, we find it's ruined by the fall. And part of that's because we're not resting. How do you work with rest? My dad had this funny thing that he would say is, <laughs> to my mom. It's like, while you're resting, could you pot those plants? <laughs> That's not what I mean. <laughs> That's not what I mean. But if you kind of, if you go back to, to this Genesis chapter, chapter one here, chapter, excuse me, chapter two, there's this little word that's really kind of interesting, and it's the word put. It literally means rest. Just like, you know, you, I've rested my Bible here, and putting is, a, is, is an appropriate thing there, but it also means rest. So God rested Adam and Eve in the garden so that they could do what? So they could worship. So they could serve. So they could do so righteously. Rested to work. We need to rest. We need to rest. But rest how? We need to rest in the work of Jesus. Because Jesus worked, right? He worked. But what was his work? To secure for you every single blessing. That you don't have to work for those anymore. You rest in that. You rest in the fact that you no longer have to work to be significant. You rest in the fact that you never have to feel loved through your work or wanted or special or, or important or secure. You're secure no matter how you work because Jesus has supplied that for you. So that may mean that, yeah, this life may not be as, as, as comfortable as you would like it to be, but you know that your retirement is amazing. Your eternity is amazing. It's set. All, the, all the, the, the treasure you need for eternity, it's already pot. It's already bought, already paid for. Jesus already worked to give that to you. And so you don't need to work for that stuff. It doesn't mean you try to make money in this life. But why do you make money in this life? You work doing something with your own hands so that you can do what? So you can give. It turns work from a self-centered thing to a giving thing. How do you go from being greedy to being generous? When do you stop eating? When do you stop eating? When you're full. When you're full of the blessings, then you can stop needing to get blessings for yourself. You can just give them away because God's given them to you. That's, how, that's the switch you need to make. You're full. You are full. You are already rich. You are so rich in Jesus that you don't need to worry about that stuff. Somebody else has done the work for that. That's Jesus. So that you can just do your work of serving people, doing so righteously like Jesus, selflessly, thinking about them, caring about them, not because you need anything yourself, you're taken care of, you give, and that's, what, that's Paul's point here, and so what I want, just to get it simply really practical, and I realize this is just kind of this big swirling mass of an idea in front that I've tried to paint for you. But so here's something really simple. What I would love for you to do is when you go to work tomorrow, wh whatever it is, even if your work is a honeydew list, 
whatever you're doing tomorrow or the rest of the day, do it with your eyes on Jesus. Say, I'm doing this for you, Jesus. This, you're, you're my boss today. You're my boss. I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to do it like you. I'm going to image you. I'm going to be, I'm gonna, when people see how I work, I want them to see G, what you're like. And I'm going to do it so that I can give because you've already given to me. I'm going to do it because you, I'm, I'm going to be a giver. I'm going to be generous because you've already met my needs. Okay? Give because you've been, because you already are not, are the opposite of the pride. You are so ridiculously blessed. You got it. You, it that, that, that part's done. You can just, you, know, you, you don't need to be hungry anymore for that stuff. You don't need to be hungry. Just give. And some of us need to really think through carefully, like, okay, how come I feel like I'm not full of blessing? How come I'm not? Okay, well, that's maybe where you need to start, is thinking about that. Because you are. But I don't feel like, it. okay, well, maybe I need to work on that. But if you feel that sense of I'm, I'm really am full, then just focus on just living for Jesus tomorrow. Say, Jesus, literally go, Jesus, today, this day is for you. This day of work is for you. I'm serving you. You're my boss today. How do you want me to live for this, this, this earthly boss? What do you want me to do here? How do you want me to do it? Because that's your job. That's your work as a human being. Bring glory to God through living like him and specifically giving because God gave to you. All right? Let's pray. Jesus, thank you that you um, have blessed us so much. I just want to pray for me and for all of us that we really do have this sense of our fullness to echo what Paul said. Your servant Paul said in the first chapter that we would know the hope of our calling, the riches of our inheritance, the power that we have in you, that we are just so ridiculously blessed. Help us to see that. Help us to see how high and how wide and how deep is your love for us, that, that no matter what happens, nothing is going to separate us from you, that, that in everything you're working for our good, even if those things are not good, you're, gonna tr you're working to make them produce good. So help us to hear that, to hear our, your, your, your full riches towards us, that we can act out of the, that, that abundance. How we Help us to live like you, Jesus. Live for you with our eyes fixated on you as our boss. And so be like your son. We thank you for all of this. In Jesus' name. I want to apologize for the delay. I got a phone call unexpectedly. And I tried to pray longer. I, I could tell because you were you were very generous, sir. Please stand.
to draw near in the presence of all that you are. We're here to give honor and praise for the rest of our days. Glorious you are, holy, beautiful beyond knowing you can have my heart. You are worthy. We will lift a shout to heaven, singing out together your song of sons and daughters preaching to the Father your glory reigns. We will lift a shout to heaven singing out together your glory reigns. Hear the song of sons and daughters preaching to the Father your glory like okay so you know worship serve glorify image god that that's our work but how does that make it not work how does it make it enjoyable it's like the the difference between play and work is you want to do it and, and and that comes from an appreciation of just how blessed you are that's the joy the joy of if I could give you an image, it's that, that joy, if you can, some of us didn't have this, but you can get the sense of that, uh, that Christmas morning where you have so many gifts, right? And it's like, oh, or a birthday where you have everything you want. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great moment, right? And you just want to give at that point. It's like, because you have, uh, you're so blessed and you're happy. That's the sense. That's the diff- that's, where, that's where it goes, the joy of abundance. God's blessed you so much, and he's blessed you because of this work. This work. He's done the work. You don't need to do this work. You have other work. The building of his kingdom, the sharing of his glory, this, which is, how do you glorify God? You tell him, tell people about him. Communicating what Jesus has done is worship because it's expressing the greatness of Jesus. participating in, in his work of saving people because that's what God's like. So I want you to remember that on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took all of those reasons for you not to be blessed, all of that sin, and he laid it on Jesus and he was crushed for those sins, the bruised for those iniquities. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and said, this is the cup of the new a covenant, the new marriage proposal, the new relationship built on his blood, his sweat, his tears, his effort for the forgiveness of sins. So come to the table and say, God, I want to live for you this day. I want to live for you for my, my life. I want my work to be serving you, being like you. Thank you for the forgiveness Help me to just live like you today and tomorrow and the rest of my life. Come to the table with a forgiveness and the new commission for what your life could be. Father, thank you for your love for us. Speak to our hearts about your love and about the purpose you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. Come to the table. Come, my 
of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, O oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Lay down your burdens, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. Oh, wanderer, come home. You're not too far. So lay down your hurt, lay down your heart, come as you are. There's hope for the hopeless and all those who strayed. Come sit at the table, come taste the grace. There's rest for the weary. A rest that endures Earth has no sorrow But heaven can cure So lay down your burdens Lay down your shame All who are broken Lift up your face blessings which we so greatly do not deserve and yet you are so incredibly lavish to your glory we give you thanks we give you praise amen the body and blood of christ as i said the blessings of christ ought to produce joy in you just like a kid with too many gifts at Christmas. So much joy. Too much gifts. And so let's stand and let's sing one last song as we finish up. As we remember the joy of Christmas that is Jesus. Jesus. 
Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround the earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Singing bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. giving and forgiving ever blessing ever blessed wellspring of the joy of living ocean depth of happy rest thou our father christ our brother all who live in love are thine teach us how to love each other lift us to the joy divine Mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. Love divine is reigning o'er us, leading us with mercy's hand. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us sunward in the triumph song of life. Joyful music leads us sunward in the triumph song of life. You get to work. You get to work. That is, you get to live your life as worship. To give praise to him, to live like him, knowing that he has blessed you so incredibly rich. So tomorrow and for the rest of the day and the rest of this week, just say every day, God, this one's for you. This one's for you. I'm going to give this one to you. Okay? Help me to help me to people look at me and say that's what God's like. All right? God bless you. We'll see you next week.